<laughs> hey, y'all, come look at this. Kung Fu Panda 4 is the kind of movie I would expect to come from DreamWorks in about 4 to 5 years after Kung Fu Panda 3. Enough time after the last movie to do a passing of the torch type thing while keeping audience interest. Kung Fu Panda 3 may have closed off Poe's story in a good way. Lord knows we need more stories to end, goddammit. So going back to his story was a bit unnecessary for the most part. But, big but, they didn't completely mess it up. Mind you, I'm still very much upset over this abomination. <laughs> it haunts my dreams. It's just not been the same since. Hi, and welcome back to Under the African Sun. I'm your friendly African NPC, and welcome back to the channel. So DreamWorks decided to dig up yet another franchise I thought would be left alone. But no, we are truly living in the worst timeline, where all the wrong decisions are made. Damn. Thank the God this wasn't one of them. Kung Fu Panda 4 may be mid, but it's only mid by its sibling standards. Let's dive into my pretentious opinions and see what worked and what didn't. Of course I have notes and opinions, not to mention spoilers. First off, I think Poe should have been way older, and a lot of characters did. Definitely the dads and Shifu. Maybe one of the Furious Five. Not Tigress though. She probably would have taken Shifu's place after years of further training under him. Poe is definitely still his boundless optimistic self and thinks being the Dragon Warrior is the last step in his journey. Then send him off on the same exact journey with a few minor tweaks here and there. Boom. You fix the biggest problem I have with this movie. The all of a sudden manner in which Poe is supposed to move on to the next step of his journey. It felt so rushed and like nothing changed in the Valley of Peace. So that would imply not much time has passed. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Like... This is a village where everyone learned chi manipulation. And all we get is Shifu making a flower bloom? Really? Wait a minute! I may be wrong, but if you were to tell me these movies take place over a four year period, I would believe you. It's been 16 years since the first movie and 8 since the last. A little change would have been nice. Oh, and whoever it was who had the bright idea of those creepy ass transformations with scales on things with no scales. Good job. I hate you. Also, also, Aquafina. You have been in at least four movies off the top of my head that I've seen and lady, I'm still waiting for one that can finally make me understand why. You've been in any of them. Money! In short, no. Besides an obvious cash grab, I don't think it should have been made the way it was. Because like I said, it's mid in comparison to its siblings. The movie looks good, but it lacks a bit of that je ne sais quoi like Tai Lung and Lord Shen in the first two movies, or the completion of Post Journey in the third. This is the end end, right? He's the successor and everything is sorted. Right? Anyway, this movie cemented something for me. 
Poe has to be some kind of genius, right? You throw anything which takes other masters lifetimes to master. You'll pick it up in a few days, week tops. Guys, Poe is kind of OP. Poe. OP. Poe. OP. Okay. No wonder he's been speed running this martial arts thing and Shifu wants him to take the next step. In quite a few martial arts stories I've come across over the years, <clears throat> when a master reaches a certain level, they take a back seat to let the new generation grow and more importantly, meditate to spy into a higher martial Tao. Nice. This movie makes me really appreciate that particular trope. In most American productions, the master dies so the hero can live up to his full potential. Death isn't the only way. My time has come. This movie sometimes has some pretty cool symbolism. The chameleon gives Jen the jewel she tried to steal, which kind of resembles a pit. And Poe gives her a peach pit. I know the movie kind of explains it in the dialogue, but I prefer this little piece of visual storytelling. The value and shape of that jewel will never change in the eyes of the chameleon, and it won't need to grow, leaving Jen with a predetermined path as her number two. Poe, on the other hand, with his peach pit, sees potential for growth and a different path for Jen and potentially maybe as naive as Shifu was with Tai Lung. Sai! Sai! I think I have something wrong with me. You don't say. These bunny kids, the less said the better. I just want to put them in a room with Nifty from Hasmin Hotel and watch as the chaos ensues. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Anyway, this movie embodies a certain Chinese proverb I know. Forcefully picked melons aren't sweet, but they do quench one's thirst. I'll be honest, there's not much to say here so I'll keep it short. Po, Zhen and the chameleon are fine in their respective roles. Po doesn't need much in terms of development, but his arc is... Meh. He may be naive and after the fourth movie he still falls for some of the stupidest things. I like that about him. Yes he's changed in some ways but he's keeping the boundless positivity you just need sometimes. Jen, uh, yeah sure whatever man, mid fam, mid. Plus Aquafina don't help. The chameleon is just that, a villain. Problem is, your competition is pretty good. She makes Kai seem like an ocean in terms of depth. And he was the least developed villain before she came along. Tai Lang and by the gods Lord Shen cannot be compared in the same breath as her. And honestly, the chameleon that can shapeshift kinda seemed creatively bankrupt. Not to mention she's out here sucking niggas' souls like there's no tomorrow. Oh, pause. Post ads should have never been in the movie. And their little side quest just didn't make sense. Your son has been Dragon Warrior for years at this point. I'm not saying you shouldn't worry, but damn, talk about overly attached parents. A tree that never faces the wind will never go strong. Someone needs to tell that proverb to them. Maybe Shifu, who is this normal badass self, whom I have no issues with. Keep doing what you're doing, Shifu. As for the rest of the characters, <sighs> there's a fish that drinks a lot because it drinks like a fish. Get it? He's voiced by Ronnie Chang, and that's his most redeeming feature. Love that guy. Mr. Beast is a pig for like one scene. Why, Jimmy? 
I'm genuinely curious. Honestly, I barely remember everyone else, with the obvious exception of the bunny kids. But the rest, meh, super forgettable. This has to be the end of Post Journey, right? In the aforementioned martial arts stories I mentioned, they are comics by the way. At this point, the protagonist moves on to a higher world and basically starts all over again. The strength is built up till this point is basically common in his new world. And he has to... Say! Say! Jesus. Anyway, he has to train more to attain a higher Tao. Here's to Hollywood not doing that. Another thing that should end is definitely this. It's been 10 years. Please stop. And just to top this turd Sunday, a goat with a goatee. Get it? Sometimes the humor is just... Mkosiam. Viola Davis adds another villain to her resume. She did her best with what she had, and honestly, so did the rest of the cast. Jack Black is Jack Black. Need I say more? Is it me, or is it now just contractually obligated for Jack Black to sing in movies? I'm not complaining. Just asking. Tenacious D rocks. I like Hollywood. I know when to end stuff when I'm done. So I'm gonna leave you with some videos to watch. And I hope you liked the video. Show some love and definitely subscribe to your friendly African NPC here under the African Sun. Catch you in the next one. Peace.